Hello friends and neighbors. I recorded this video, went through the whole shtick, and then found out the video had no audio. So this is a redo, something I don't normally have to do. I usually do everything in one take these days. And so this video is about the word notice. You will know it's spelled N-O-T-I-C-E. Now, I don't know if you have looked the word up or not. I don't know if you've ever parsed the word. Do you know what it means? Some students, uh, I will ask them a question about a word, and I'll ask them, what does it mean? And they'll say, well, I think it means blah, 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 blah. And then I'll say, did you look it up? And without fail, the most common answer is, well, no, I didn't. So it's always good to look words up to find out what they mean. Now, if you were to parse the word notice, you will find that there are no particles of negation in the word, according to the etymology dictionary. However, if you look at the word in and of itself, you can see the word no, and you can see the word not. So it's sort of subconsciously sub uh, implied that there's something negative about it. So what I've decided to do is to, I've taken that word out of my construct and I've replaced it with another word. G-N-O-T-I-C-E. And I have not just pulled this out of thin air. I'm going to show you my continuance of the evidence as to why I've chosen to do this. Now, of course, with most everything I do, this is open source. It's my gift to you. You don't need my thumbprint to use this word if you want to. It's open source. Feel free to use it if you think it'll benefit you. Use the knowledge you, fi uh, you find of value in this video. It's my gift to you, all right? I'm not here to hide anything. I'm here to share things. And I'm going to share with you my closure on the word notice, as spelled with a G at the beginning, and why I am excising, cutting out the word N-O-T-I-C-E. So let's start with Google, which is as good a place as any to start to find out what notice is. Notice definition. Fact of observing or paying attention to something. Notification or warning of something, especially to allow preparations to be made. Become aware of. People also ask, what do you mean by the term notice? An announcement or intimation of something impending. Warning. There you go. See here is notice is the legal concept. Let's see what that means. Warning or intimation of something announcement subject to change without notice. So let's look at a synonym for notice. Sign, poster, advice, news, announcement, cogniz cognizance, comment, mention. All right, let's go into Webster's 1828. Observation by the eye or by the other senses. We take notice of objects passing or standing before us. We take notice of the, the what? Oh, <laughs> thought I was dyslexic for a second there. Words of a speaker. We take notice of a peculiar taste of food or the smell of an orange. And of our peculiar sensations, notice is the act by which we gain knowledge of something within the reach of sentences, senses or the effect of an impression on some of the senses. Observation by the mind or intellectual power. Take notice of 
distinction between truth and veracity. Okay, this is the one more that we're concerned with here. Information intelligence by whatever means communicated knowledge given and received. Bell gives notice. Merchant gives notice. Paper that communicates information. It's interesting that in a dictionary we have misspelled words. <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes. So now let's look at it from a legal sense. A legal notification or warning that is delivered in a written format or through a formal announcement. An individual or party is considered liable if the party has knowledge of the notice, received the notice, knows it through experience, has knowledge with regards to an associate fact and could have gained knowledge had an inquiry been undertaken. This one right here, ladies and gentlemen, Black's Law can take that one and go fish up a tree. That's the goofiest thing I've ever heard. So if you're driving down a road, all right, you're driving down a road, and um, da, 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 da. and you're going about 55, okay? No one's around. You're just going 55. And all of a sudden, the police pulls you over. There's no signs or anything on the road. No notice on the road. And the police pulls you over and says, you are going 55 in a 15-mile-an-hour zone. And you're looking around, and there's just trees, nothing else, no signs. Nothing. You said, well, uh... I didn't see any signs. And then the cop says, you could have gained knowledge had an inquiry been undertaken. If you looked it up in your state speed limit codes on the, on the highways, you would have seen that it's 15 miles an hour through this half a mile stretch of, that's no different than the stretch that comes after it or the stretch that comes before it. <clears throat> but it is a good excuse for us to fine you $500. I'm being cheeky here, but this is the ridiculousness and the goofiness and the rottenness of the legal system and the arbitrariness. Now let's go into the etymology of notice. Early 15th century, to notify, give notice of, a sense obsolete. Here we go. Early 15th century. Information, knowledge, intelligence. Uh, come to know, get to know, get acquainted. Proto-Indo-European, G-N-O, to know. Knowledge. And this forms the basis of the correct sentence structure, communication, parsi, syntax, grammar, closure, in my code dictionary of the word notice g-n-o-t-i-c-e so here finally is the correct sentence structure closure for the word for the contract fact notice taken from my code dictionary which is co-authored by my tutor colon raven hyphen farhad hyphen tohidi colon frn and myself colon jason hyphen matthew colon glass and this is how it goes for the notice of this finite mean is with the documentation of the knowledge with a method or with a performance by the certification claim. And backwards for the certification claim of a performance or of a method is with the knowledge of the documentation with the finite mean by the notice, period. So moving forward, real quick to explain it, we have for the notice, which is the cause of the sentence. That's what's causing the claim uh, to move forward. You need two points with which to draw a straight line. That's why you need two position loadial phrases in front of the verb, which for the notice is one, and then of this finite mean is the second. Of the finite mean is the cause of the sentence. What is the cause concerned with? The finite mean. Now we drop our verb of the thinking in. Singular is, because the cause, notice, is singular. 
And then we follow that with the possessive with the documentation. What is the documentation possessing the finite mean? What is it concerned with? Of the knowledge. What's possessing the knowledge? The documentation and a method or a performance. What is the authority of the method and performance? The certification claim. It's a claim of certification. So going backwards, the cause now becomes a certification claim. And what is that concerned with? It's concerned with a performance or a method. Okay? Now we drop our verb of the thinking in singular. It's still singular because certification claim is singular. Is with the knowledge. With the knowledge is possessing the method and the performance. And it is concerned with the documentation of the documentation. What is possessing the documentation with this finite mean? And what is the authority of the finite mean? Well, it's notice because that is the finite mean that I'm sharing with you. So that is the closure on notice. I'll go into a little bit more depth uh, using plain, simple English to explain this. So the closure on notice is it's a form of documentation of knowledge talking about it's we're using a method or a performance by a certification claim so for example if you want to give notice to your fellow mankind that you're a live life claimant you could publish that publicly using a notice documentation of knowledge with a method or a performance you're performing the sharing of your live life claim you're documenting your knowledge so when you publish that, you're now telling the rest of society that sees it, you're giving notice that you have knowledge of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, and you're a live life claimant and will be treated as such by those who know what that means. Now here's the flip side to it. If you don't know correct sentence structure and you don't know how to perform, then things might not turn out so well for you. Because if you make a claim, you have to be able to back it up. That is why, friends and neighbors, it is so important to have closure on the grammar before you even think about using your claim of the live life for anything. To make a correct document contract postal vessel court venue, you do have to have a correct live life claim and you do have to have correct knowledge of quantum grammar. Those are things that must be in place if you're going to use this stuff. Now for me, let's see. Some of the ways that I give notice, G-N-O-T-I-C-E, to different contract parties when I'm traveling from point A to point B to point C, if I'm out there using correct sentence structure to navigate, if I'm using my CPASC treaty, I also have my live life claim on me. I have my uh, favorite volition claim on me, port authority claim, grammar auditor, document contract, court authority claim, grammar tutor claim, domicile claim. I have all my claims on me, my ship's papers when I'm going from point A to point B to point C. And when I'm navigating with correct sentence structure, then if I'm going into specific venues, specific locations, like say foreign vessel and dry dock, which could be anything, you know, it could be a fiction court, it could be a federal building, it could be a military installation, it could be a government building, it could be wherever, a school, I would post my roads to that place, giving notice that I'm going to be arriving at such and such uh, now space location in the continuum. It's called posting your roads using postal mechanics. And that would also be considered notice of something. Now, if I'm just going about my day-to-day -day business, I'm not going to post my rail roads to go down to the grocery store, um, you know, to pick up some salad. I'm not going to post my roads and, and uh, show my CPAS C treaty to the cashier. I mean, what's what's the point of doing that? That's uh, that's kind of goofy. But uh, yeah, that's notice. And again, friends and neighbors, if you want to use this word, 
you're more than welcome to. It's open source. I'm not trying to hide anything. You don't need my thumbprint, anything like that. It's open source. Uh, my gift to you. Now, I do advise and strongly recommend that you do not plagiarize exact sentences from uh, things that I've created. All right? I can't stop you from doing that, of course. I'm not going to tell you not to do it. I'm going to ask that you be very careful about it because it is very important that you do your own work. You do your own research. You just don't copy and paste something or plagiarize something just because you think that's the, you know, that it's correct and it's the right thing to do. It's always good to do your own research. It's always good to put your own work into it. Create your own dictionary. Don't just copy and paste and plagiarize what someone else does. I know there's a tendency to do that in beginners. And I've seen lots of people do it where, like, if I send an email to someone, they will, they will, like that Stephen Temple guy uh, did not too long ago. I did a video on some of it. Literally copy and pasted my sentence and took out, like, my name and put his name in there. And the spacing was all goofy and messed up. <laughs> It was just the biggest botched plagiarism thing I've ever seen in my life. On the other hand, when someone says that, uh, like, for example, if someone would accuse me of plagiarism, that's almost impossible because I don't have any desire to copy what anyone else is doing having to do with correct sentence structure or what they think is correct sentence structure because I don't see anyone out there that's correct with it not really not anybody who's out in the public writing sentences like i am and as i feel like i'm the only one out here that's doing it there would be absolutely no reason i view them all as fiction constructs and i'm not worried about what a fiction construct do uh does matter of fact i think it's the opposite i think the fiction is probably worried about what i'm doing but i don't know that's a guess if you'd like to learn correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar Contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again. And I'll see you in the next one.